All right, boxers, you've already received your instructions. I commend you to obey my commands and protect yourself at all times. All right, let's touch gloves. I expect a good, clean fight. Let's go. Good luck. The question in this fight to me is whether Macklin is good enough to expose what I consider the inevitable athletic decline of a 37-year-old champion with an athletic style. You expect to see the beginnings of that decline tonight, Larry? No, I'm saying the question is whether Macklin is good enough to expose it. Gotcha. So you're saying it's a matter of time at some point. Well, I think Roy Jones and uh, Glenn Johnson. And there's not that big a dissimilarity, incidentally, between Martinez's style and that of Roy Jones. Sergio seems to be looking for a fast start. And you see the unusual movement, the diving in and out style. Very unusual, very difficult for opponents to deal with. And he's usually on balance when he comes in to punch, despite all the movement. That's what's kind of intuitive and impressive about him, Emmanuel. Break, break, stop it, stop it, One of the things that's so interesting, though, that Roy Jones was a sensational fighter. I mean, I really sense he was 10, 11, 12, Olympics, everything. And I always was gifted with athletic talent. And this guy started at the age of 20 uh, boxer, which makes him even more amazing in some ways. Again, years spent as a bicycle racer and a soccer player prior to entering a boxing gym at age 20, leaving him with an endurance base, which probably still affects his abilities in the ring. It's, it's showing me great speed, great coordination. Doesn't seem like he's lost anything, but I tell you what, he hasn't been able to effectively find a way to penetrate and land a punch right now at this stage on Macklin too much. Now, he had his most difficult outing of recent years in his last fight against Darren Barker. There were moments in the fight when it appeared that Tar Martinez was unable to deal with Barker's counterpunching style. He got his nose bloodied in that fight. He says now that he was fighting with an elbow which was dislocated in training five or six days before the fight. Sounds extraordinary. He claims it's true. Well, I tell you what, comparing Barker to right now to Macklin, Barker never came into the fight to me with, a, with the confidence or desire to win, it was just to put on a good performance. Macklin is fighting with the attitude that he comes to win, believes he can win, and is going to try to win. There's a small red mark above the left eye of Matthew Macklin, possibly the product of a Martinez right hook. Whatever the plan is of Macklin, he's executing it well. He's catching uh, Martinez between his sallies. Uh, Which other opponents haven't been able to do. Good point. He's spending a lot of time trying to make Martinez take the offensive. Martinez is a natural counterpuncher. And I think it's a good round for Macklin. Turn, 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 turn. They trade body shots at the end of the round. Both guys showing good footwork as they move to find opportunities against each other. There, there. Vaseline. Good? Good. How's the job? Good. You're doing good. Just keep going, Sergio. You're, 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 you're waiting too much. It's a bit of a surprise, but you're waiting too much. You're hanging there. See, he's dropped. He's dropped his power. He's got nothing there. Here you see right here, you see Martinez led in one of his best punches of the round. In fact, with a beautiful right jab, which may be one of his best punches as the fight moves on because he can't seem to find his range with his left hand right now at this point. Copy box numbers in round one. Martinez seven out of only 24 punches thrown. Couldn't find that many opportunities because Macklin only threw 35 punches. Macklin landed six of his 35. Every one of the punches he lands is what we call a power shot, meaning something other than a jab. Obviously, Martinez's best punch of the round was the jab that he landed, and that may have been what produced the red mark over the left eye of Matthew Macklin. Good right hand by Martinez. Very quick hands.
Acklin beginning to commit just a little bit. Martinez still hadn't found much to be able to counter. Well, neither guy really committing too much. Everybody is fighting a safe fight at this stage right now. Very tentative. And uh, both guys are fighting with good speed, too. I would say this. Even though Macklin is naturally not as fast as Martinez, but still he's fighting with just enough speed that he's creating a problem for Martinez. Martinez is a 10 to 1 favorite and not looking like it at this early stage. Martinez, I think, seems a, a, a little bit undecided, Emmanuel. Like, he doesn't know where this guy is, is going to be, when he's going to go. Good. Martinez Martinez left hand straight left punch. hand that knocks Macklin into the ropes. Well, he figured that one out. Just as well, I, I would say. I, I, and as a rule, I agree with you, though, Larry. That was just one of those great, great, very great, fast great, punches great, that, great, with his coordination and time, and he caught him with a great punch. I don't think he really hurt him that much, but it really is a clean shot. Sunned him, but I don't think he really hurt him that much. Stop, stop, yeah, stop, but stop, I think stop, Macklin is no, beginning no, to learn no, that the more on, he go. throws, the more he's going to get hit. Because that was a counter shot. Well, it'll be interesting to see when the crowd begins to boo the absence of contact in the fight. And, and when they do... Well, you know, I, I would say Buddy McGregor did a great job of, I think, working with Mackin on keeping his right hand right in the center of his uh, chin, which has prevented Martinez from landing a lot of those straight lefts. Like, uh, outside of that first one he landed, where he stunned him. Mackin has been taking away his left hand for the most part whenever he throws it. By keeping his right hand stop, in the right stop, position. Stop, 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 right here. Come on, come on, come on. Step back, step back, step back, step back. Stand. Another straight left hand by Martinez to punctuate the round. There's Seamus Macklin, father of Matthew Macklin. And as we mentioned, pure Irishman, but has lived most of his life in Birmingham, England, making Macklin an expatriate and a popular one. See, you got caught with the kind of question you're reaching. Don't reach. Okay? When you feel like if you feel like he's going too far away, you gotta get a little bounce and close the gap. You can't walk flat footed. Okay. Get a little bounce and close the gap with the head movement. Okay? Yeah. But just be careful now. Like I said, don't get caught with those left hands. He's trying to lure you in. Okay, when he starts moving away, you go out and over. Cut him off. Take him out of his middle. Don't follow him. That's what he wants you to do. Keep throwing that straight right hand to the body, baby. Okay? You ever see Martinez land where it was a beautiful straight left, just split second time, in, but at the same time, I think it was more so Macklin lost his balance as a result of Martinez stepping on his foot at the same time when he landed the punch. We're talking about uh, the intelligence of uh, Macklin's approach to Martinez, he did spend a year in college at Coventry University. Before opting out in favor of his professional boxing career. There's a slight mark under the right eye of Matthew Macklin now, perhaps the product of that left hand from Martinez. Macklin has relatively pale skin and marks more easily than some fighters. In, in round two, CompuBox found Martinez throwing only 22 punches but landing nine, including that left hand that we've seen a couple of times, and then Macklin was nine out of 43. That's a good example of the fact that punch that is excellent it's showing the quantitative value of a fight but not the qualitative because it can't measure that kind of a punch that sent Macklin reeling jab lands for Martinez Macklin comes back with a right to the body up shoot left landed for Macklin excited the crowd A lot of movement, not a lot of punching going on. And here comes the booing. Well, neither guy can really get his rhythm to run on the other guy because they both got such good time and both of really fighting anticipation type fights, trying to make the opponent miss more than punching themselves. But at this stage, Macklin's fighting a very good fight. You take that 
knocked down a knock off balance blow when he stepped on the foot. Actually, that round was a close round if you check that out of the picture. Martinez gets in a couple of shots against Macklin along the ropes. Macklin ducks away and tries to come back. Martinez was gone. Martinez has begun a couple of significant social outreaches outside the ring. He has a social conscience. He's trying to help himself build identity. A couple of years ago, he started a foundation for support of battered women after the death of Venezuelan boxer Edwin Valero's wife at Valero's hands. And he also has gotten active in the It Gets Better movement to help battered, I mean, bullied children, children who feel bullied at school or among their peers. And as part of that, he has more or less adopted as a dear friend a teenage girl from Connecticut who found herself a victim of bullying, and she is now Sergio Martinez's number one fan, and we are told that after a year out of school as the result of the bullying and with Sergio's support and guidance, she's back in school this year. Go, Monique. We gotta manage the fight. We gotta go and lead the fight. Jab, All right, good? How are you doing, good? Good, everything's good? Don't wait for his. Don't wait. He's got to work because you're you're hitting, you're responding. On his attack. Come on, it's on us. Let's go get him. We got to push him. He doesn't know how to go back. Right here, right down the pipe. Okay. I, I go, sense a, a sense of uncertainty on the face of Martinez. Am I wrong? I agree with you 100. percent well, he hasn't been able to effectively be able to, to penetrate the defense of Macklin, and actually Macklin is creating a little problem for him. You know, just, some, uh, some of it is the expectations game now. I think there's a sense of uncertainty on both their faces. I don't see that Macklin feels as though he's in some kind of command here. No, but, but, but Martinez he's, he's, is, the, is the champion, the 10 to 1 favorite. Yep, and he just took a good hard right hand shot, which causes you know, Macklin to had smile in the ring. Three knockouts in a row. He's called. This fight is a knockout, which is uncharacteristic of him. But does that mean he's supposed to have done it by now? No, no, it doesn't. Uh, even he didn't say three rounds. I mean, he looked lousy <laughs> for much of the time against Barker, and on yeah. the record it says 11th round knockout. And point well taken. You strike out four times and you hit the home run in the ninth inning, you've had a great day. Good point. <laughs> Harold, how do you have it through three? <laughs> okay, so they got a two runs to one. 29-28, Sergio Martinez. I thought in rounds one or two, he landed the sharper punches, although he didn't land a heck of a lot. In round three, I just thought Matthew Mack would not work them. Two to one, Martinez. I have it one, one, and one. Which is not what you would expect with a 10 to one favorite going into the fight. But I think the difference is not only just the skill level of Mackey, but his de determination, his mental attitude is better than most of the fighters that have fought Sergio in recent years. Hard left hand by Martinez on a counter shot inside. And once again, I guess he knocked Macklin off balance. Yeah, you know, but his great, great split second time in hitting quite a nation. But, and that's what he gets by with his unbelievable speed. And in that little gap, he can get a shot in the team. And the replay shows once again Macklin was tripping over Martinez's foot as he got hit with that punch. Well, Southpaw, conventional fighter. It's been known to happen. <laughs> Martinez believes he was fouled with a low blow. Referee Eddie Cotton said nothing. Macklin kept coming. But he's, he's got a cup that is extremely high too, you know. So you know, it's a lot of time the referee looks at the fact that even a punch on a belt line is really just properly is not even a low blow because he wears such a high cup.
drives Mart I mean, drives Martinez back. Partially blocked, but still yeah. a solid connect. Well, it's partially blocked, but I think that Martinez just not used to anyone even doing that. Because usually his dancing speed has been totally in control of a fight by this time. Let's take a moment right now to show you something we have seldom, if ever, seen on our boxing telecast. You see the moments of victory and the exultation of the winning fighter. This is Donovan George after his loss in our first fight tonight against Edwin Rodriguez. And this is desolation. This is a young man who said to us yesterday, this is all I have. I have nothing in my life other than my boxing career. It would be very difficult for me to get a conventional job. I need to win. He lost. Come on, let's go, Sergio. Don't worry about your feet when you're jabbing. Dombey box numbers okay. in the fourth Don't round. Martinez landing only four of 17 of what we call power shots, which is anything other than a jab. He had a seven to one edge in jabs landing. Macklin, power shots, nine out of 29. A Little bit more contact, a little bit higher percentage than Martinez in that round. And once again, Macklin gets the round on the Letterman card, evening the fight after four. Harold, um, you don't take credit away from a fighter for if he's landed a punch with his foot on the other fighter's <laughs> foot, do you? <laughs> you got to take it into consideration, Larry. <laughs> In other words, if Sergio Martinez would have knocked Matthew Macklin back without stepping on his foot, you would have said, wow, that's a terrific punch. You know, you know, would have won him the round. But if he's stepping on his foot, you can't say it's a terrific punch. But you know what? The judges here at the fight, they didn't have the advantage of seeing the replay that we saw. So I'm quite sure they would give probably those rounds to Martinez as if he staggered him. Good judge watches for that. Yeah, but they don't, they're not, they're not, no, I don't think they saw that. I, I don't, I think uh, we saw it because of the re replay, but I don't think they did. But you know, at all times, Martinez is very, very dangerous because of the fast hand speed that he has and the spit sucker that you just rest and relax for a minute, bam, he can hit you and get a knockdown or knock you out. Well, one thing that's clearly happening here, Martinez has begun to recognize that he cannot play his normal game of simply waiting to counter because Macklin isn't going to attack all that often. So now Martinez has begun to adjust his style, and Emmanuel, he's going forward and attacking considerably more than in the first couple of rounds. Yeah, and he's got faster hands, too. You know, he spent a number of years in Spain, and they've seen uh, all the European fighters, and he had in his mind classified Macklin as a particular type of European fighter. Uh, and that he thought he had him figured out before the fight start. But it took him a few rounds to uh, see that no fighter fi fits into a stereotype. Exactly. And now he's going to have to engage in more of a give and take than might have been his intention, which makes it a better fight. This is a pretty close round. Both, both guys have had their moments. Body shot by Macklin with the right hand. Hard right hand by Macklin upstairs. His best shot of the night. And it stands to reason that your re lead right hand is your best punch against the southpaw in a lot of instances. That was what landed for Matthew there. And that's interesting because Macklin's speed is nowhere. Well, I wouldn't say it's not as fast as Martinez, but I think his timing is so good right excellent. now. Excellent. His timing yeah. has been excellent yeah. this yeah. round. Yeah, he, he and his trainer have did a great job. I think Better McGurd has really worked very really good. Another lead right hand lands for Macklin. Martinez got in a body shot and moved away. Martinez is getting stiff competition tonight from Macklin. They trade again. Both guys land. Martinez wants to fight. We may wind up with a brawl. You okay? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Vaseline. 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 Thank you. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. Wait, wait. Wait, wait. Talked about in the gym. Made him to fight more head movement. More head movement to punch off the head movement. Stay relaxed. Okay, just stay relaxed, baby. 
Nice deep breath, baby. Very good. Stay smart. Don't get caught. Don't start reaching. You're starting to get a little weak. Here you see McLemore, a, a beautiful right hand. In fact, I think it's the first time I've ever saw Martinez hit with that type of a punch in all of the years that I've been watching him fight. I agree. Well, he did go down. And that's the reaction of the back of the family. When he went down with Williams, I thought it was more off balance. When he knocked Williams down, Williams was seriously hurt. Right. And so I, I've never saw him hit with a clean shot. I like think that, that was a better shot than the one with which Williams downed him in round one in Atlantic City. That was a balanced knockdown. I agree this with was you. a clean punch. Well, Macklin is giving us a very good account of himself and uh, certainly not looking like a 10 to 1 under. Well, that was a strong round. Both fighters had big numbers, but Macklin's were better, according to CompuBox. You're going to see Martinez step it up. He's going to have to really go in now and try to try to force some of those exchanges, believe it or not, even at the risk of getting hit because he's got faster hands. This is going to take he, a major he, style he, adjustment in the fighter, so it would appear. I think Martinez is going to try to have to, have to exchange with him and hope that his shots well, get Well, then, then what we're saying is is that Macklin uh, uh, systematically beating him at this stage with this style. You know, has forced him, a champion, a guy that we're... Uh, praising as the number three fighter in the world, et cetera, and suddenly the other guy's dictating to him how he has to fight. Not just us. He's number three on every credible pound-for-pound pound no, list. that's correct. And deservedly so. But the ten-to-one odds were clearly way too big. <laughs> Virtually every ringside expert knew that coming in. Macklin is a much better fighter than should than should ever be 10 to 1 against virtually anybody. Maybe Ray Robinson should be a 10 to 1 favorite, but not I, Sergio Martinez. I think that's part of the the deal that that he has been so so rate, highly rated as this uh, great uh, fighter and story uh, with this. Uh, unique style to him uh, so that and the other guys never beaten the top fight so it's understandable but what we understand now is it's a fight and now there's the good right hand counter by Martinez he's beginning to try to time Macklin's lead right hands and forward moves mentioned that Martinez told us yesterday that he fought with a damaged elbow against Aaron Barker. It was the left elbow, not his jab and hook hand, but the cross hand. And he says that he fought most of the Barker fight with only one hand, his right hand. By the way, it's his far more effective side anyway. Seven. Martinez lands a jab to punctuate the round, nods at the fans. He comes back to his uh, corner. The Martinez fans cheer. And the Macklin fans make noise, too. He's catching all your punches. You're hitting him with everything. Now keep moving. Breathe. As you watch the action tonight here on HBO, you can send your tweets to at HBO Boxing using the hashtag Martinez Macklin. As a matter of fact, trending right now is... Sergio Martinez. Be careful that uppercut, okay? He's trying to bait you with the left hand. Stay low in the shot. Okay. Hey, Ralph. Oh, he's pulling down. He's doing it now. He's got it. Okay, hey, stay smart in there, okay? Stay smart, baby. Jabs in round six. Martinez 12 out of 24. Macklin one out of 13. So one thing that Sergio has done to step up the pace is begin to throw more jabs. Harold, how do you have it through six? Yeah, Jim, I got it all even. 57-57, three rounds apiece. I thought Sergio Martinez at least started to get busy in that sixth round. Because for the first five rounds, I mean, for gosh sake, he wasn't busy at all. I mean, I, I thought he won the first two rounds because he landed some sharp punches, but he didn't land a lot. Then I gave Matthew Macklin three rounds in a row because when Macklin jumps on him, when he gets off first, he lands hard right hands. He won three rounds in a row on my card. Certainly landed good shots. But then Martinez got busy, which is what he has to do in round six. Three to three.
while we're talking, I get a tweet from Max Kellerman, who wants me to know that on his pound-for-pound -pound list, he has Donaire third and Martinez fourth. <laughs> and by the way, some people were fairly disappointed in Donaire down in San Antonio on February 4th. Well, I thought that Donaire's opponent was, uh, was really spending a lot of time on defense too early in the fight, and that makes a big difference. And uh, very cautious and, and natural. You don't look too good when the guy's on defense. I thought Donaire looked terrific in San Antonio, but sometimes if you don't get the knockout when people are expecting it, you get criticized, and he did. Yep. On Max's uh, rankings, official rankings, for him. <laughs> Nobody's rankings are official rankings, Larry. Other than the so-called governing bodies. Right hand to the body. Macklin having to reach for the landed punch. Martinez has been moving in and out, created a little more distance. He landed the biggest shot early in the round. Macklin has slowed down a little bit, and, that, and right now as he slowed down a lot, you see Martinez is taking his play away from him a little bit back, being out working his jab and moving back and forth. There, Martinez missed and got tagged to the body. <laughs> Martinez's glove touched the canvas, and that's going to be a knockdown for Macklin. Martinez doesn't believe it should be a knockdown. Seven, he thinks he was thrown. Eight, Eddie Cotton eight, has ruled it a knockdown. We'll check a replay later, but right now, Martinez is in danger of losing a 10-8 round. Just what I was saying that Mackley was slowing down, not punching enough. Hard left hand by Martinez. And another. And a straight right hand as he tries to rally. And Martinez yelling at Macklin as the round comes to a close. But Matthew Macklin is in command now after having gotten credit for a knockdown. Hey, now listen. I talked to him. I just did. I just did. Listen to me. Don't get caught up in the crowd. Okay? Okay, we're doing great, baby. But listen, don't fuck okay. me. You got to give me more head movement. Okay, he's going to come out shooting that left hand under and over. Keep focusing. Keep that head moving. Let's there you see look. what was called a knockdown where they was kind of twisted up in the legs and all of a sudden he landed the right hand. But the official rules is if you go down as a result of being hit with a blow, if you hadn't been hit with the blow, whether it's on your shoulder or whatever, it wouldn't have been a knockdown. This was officially a knockdown. All Fair enough. Balance. I'd, I'd it's call a it a knockdown. knockdown. Still. I think it's a knockdown it's as a knockdown. well. Even though there was balance involved and he fell over Macklin's foot, he got hit with a punch. So that's a knockdown. You know, and now Martinez is behind on the scorecard. Uh, you're going to see a very, very uh, anxious and urgent fight in Martinez this round. Well, we'll see if tough, well, tough round for Macklin. Well, we're going to see what championship qualities now that Martinez will show. This is a severe test. Ideal drama in the theater at Madison Square Garden. Middleweight champion of the world in a fiery crucible with Matthew Macklin, most likely behind on the scorecards now as we come to round eight. Got his feet caught on Macklin's foot again. Left hand lands for Macklin. Yesterday, a highly prominent member of Martinez's team pulled me aside and said, I know everybody's confident, I know Sergio's confident, but I worry about him in this fight. I wonder if all the activity has taken its toll. Sounds prophetic right now. Well, you, you wonder when he's so busy calling out other fighters, you know, whether he's concentrating on the fight at hand. Um, and there's just a, been a general look of concern, worry. Um, 
Well, you know, Macri is having, having a much better performance than everybody expected. And right what he's doing, Martinez is trying to anticipate now the movement of Macklin when he Good shoots right his left hand. Right Martinez rocked Macklin's chin. Yeah, he's stepping up the pace there. See, he's shooting that left hand pretty much where he feels that Macklin's head is going to go now, where before he was going over his head. Some good body shots to try to ward Martinez off. Little rally here for Macklin now as he tries to get back into a round that Martinez seemed to be winning. Well, there is drama building up now because the lauded middleweight champion. Hard left hand by Martinez. Good straight shot. He's trying to overcome a tougher challenger than he anticipated. Good round for Martinez. He's put another point back on the scorecard in most likely, or in all likelihood. Good. But it's an extremely close fight. Very good, very good. Vaseline there. Sergio. You gotta keep moving. Keep moving. He's eating all of your left. Keep going. Whenever you want, you hit him. Keep going, sir, but don't stay in front of him. This is championship rounds now, Matt. Okay? Yeah. Okay, let's go, baby. Okay, don't get caught up in the crowd. Yeah. Keep the head moving and keep, and keep the right hand straight. Okay? Here we see Martinez land a tremendous straight left, and this is the punch that the last few rounds he's been very effective with. Seemed like he's timed and can figure out the head position Second of Macklin out. before he throws his left hand. And he seems to be at this stage more mentally alert and sharper than Macklin. Going down his reacting to Martinez's rally there. CompuMox numbers in the eighth. Martinez landing more punches, 17 to 12, landing the harder shots. Gets back to within one point of Macklin on Harold Letterman's guard. Round nine of a scheduled 12. <laughs> One way for Martinez to bail himself out would be to find a way to knock Macklin out. Another way would be to win every round from here on in. He can scarcely take any chances with more lost rounds. The way he's fighting, he still thinks he can win the fight by just winning rounds. I think he may have come into this fight with the mentality of another knockout. Now he's just trying to win the fight. Just exactly the position that Macklin's going to have his head when he throws that left, and he's timing it just right now. He knows he's going to bend to his right, so he's shooting his, his punch a little bit more to his left himself, knowing that Macklin's head will be right there. Lands it again. Yeah. You know, but he's trying to, look, one punch at a time. But I mean, this is the middleweight champion of the world. When does he throw a combination? When does he stand there and say, okay, I'm better than you? When you fight with your hands down and that style, all you can do is try to throw one punch and try to get some space between you right away. I recall he would that get Roy caught. Jones fought Two left hands, hands down from Martinez, and both landed. And managed to throw eight punch. Roy Flurries. Jones was an exception. <laughs> <laughs> We're not watching Roy Jones. That's true. But this is a style, a, a improvised style, uh, not totally dissimilar than Roy's. This is an improvised career, not just an improvised style. This wasn't what he expected to be doing at this time in his life when he was growing up. Unlike a lot of prize fighters who get started at age 9, 10, or 11. Another left hand by Martinez. Another left hand by Martinez. He's had a good round and has clearly won it. Macklin seems to be mentally disorientated and, and not able to deal with what's happening right now. He's not, not able to concentrate with the in and out movement as he gets tired. 
it gets gotten tired and, and right now Martinez is just taking advantage of it. Tremendous speed. Un unlike Martinez, who has a history of great endurance, Macklin has had problems with stamina and has faded in a couple of fights. Could it happen again here? Come on, my baby. You can't stop standing there taking punches. No good. No good, baby. Okay, we're not here for that. Okay, when he start hold your hands up, he starts running shots. You gotta keep the head moving. Nice deep breath. Come on, man, you gotta give me some more jazz, baby. Just standing there now. Okay? And you're following him. Stop following him around the ring. Water, please. You gotta cut him off. Come on, come on. Breathe, breathe, breathe. How are you doing? Go ahead. Good. You're managing the fight, man. It's your, you're, you have managing the fight. But he's going. He's ready to go. Keep leading you. Yeah, your distance, Sergio. At your distance. Remember, Sergio. Sergio Martinez is winning the fight primarily because of the left hand shots that he's landing. He's timed it just right. And it may be that he's not putting punches together, but in this particular situation, it's doing enough for him to win. Uh, for the most part because of that one punch, but the big question about Mark now is is he really as good as everybody's at saying that he is and number three best in the world? Well, no, I pound. think the big question is can he win this fight? That's the immediate problem right now. Harold, that was probably Martinez's best round. How do you have it through nine? Okay, Chip, I've got an 85-85 wall even. It rounds five to four Sergio Martinez, but it's the points that count. And Matthew Macklin's got that extra point in round seven for the knockdown. You know, Chip, until the eighth round, I never thought Matthew uh, uh, Sergio Martinez fought like the middleweight champion of the world. I mean, he did a lot of circling, very little punching, but in round eight, he did start to pick up the pace. I, I mean, I agreed with Larry. He certainly didn't look like a champion up until round eight. In round eight, he realized he was behind. He started to punch a little more, started to land good shots, and Math Matthew Macker does look a little bit tired. 85 to 85, but rounds five to four Martinez. I have it even as well. So the fight's on the table going to the last three rounds. One interesting footnote. One of the three official judges for the fight is Harold's daughter, Julie. And though their scores are not always identical, they are often very similar. Sometimes they are identical for obvious reasons. All this means, of course, is that Julie's an excellent judge. And you can be happy that she's one of the three. Well, you know, I mean, traditionally going down a stretch when you have tight fights, I've always went for the guy that with the speed. Speed used to always win in those close type fights. More often than power? More often than power. Well, Martinez is the faster fighter. If he doesn't wear down. Good body shot by Macklin. Right hand lands for Martinez. Not a big one. Martinez lands another jab. Not a big one. Martinez Good is left hand. Incidentally, uh, predicted a knockout within 10 rounds. So here we are, 10th round. Knocked out Barker in the 11th. Late knockouts are not all that common an occurrence. He's had a few. Martinez, Barker walked into it. Or excuse me, Macklin walked into it. One, two, three. Tenth round is a little bit like the ninth. Yeah, and Macklin seems to mentally have shut down a lot. He, he's fighting, but he don't seem to be thinking in, in his fast and as sharp as Martinez at this stage, in addition to the, the, the blazing speed of Martinez. Left hand lands for Martinez, right hand lands. His mouthpiece struck. He knocks Macklin into the rope. Martinez is fighting without his mouthpiece and looking for a knockout as the round comes to a close. I saw a green mouthpiece hey, land on the floor, so it didn't take much of a, <laughs> of a figuring out which, who owns the mouthpiece. Okay, you keep, you're holding your left hand in the pocket. Where's the mouthpiece? Water, please. You land on the right hand, but where's the hook? Okay, you're getting one dimensional. You can't be one dimensional with this guy. Okay? You gotta give me some more left hooks now. Round 11 is coming up, baby. Yeah. Don't stand there taking no. crazy Take shots. Okay. A nice deep breath. Keep throwing that left. Keep throwing that left. You're doing good? Everything's good. 
Work it, Sergio, manager, but you've got to throw your hand. He's ready to go. You got to be more aggressive now. Let's go, Sergio. Well, it's more or less life and death for middleweight champion Sergio Martinez in Madison Square Garden. But in the last two rounds, he has outlanded Matthew Macklin 36-16 in power shots, and he's taking command of the fight. Probably a point ahead now on Harold Letterman's scorecard with two rounds to go. When you are having a less than impressive performance, as Larry has told us many times, the basic ethic is win this one, look great the next time. You know, and sometimes the, the, the judges, like the crowd, uh, take into account expectations. Yep. And if Martinez doesn't look as good as they expected him or Macklin looks better, how does that measure into the scoring? So Martinez is throwing a little more frequently, landing that straight left hand, trying to seal the deal and make it stick. Matthew Macklin gets a chance to land his straight right from time to time, and he's landed a couple of clean body shots in this round. Good left hand by Martinez. He's been scraping Macklin with that. Ever since he made that adjustment, you talked about Emmanuel throwing the punch a little bit farther to the outside because that's where Macklin's dunking his hand. Yep, and he's, he's been having a picnic with that left hand punch in there. Right now, just like he's mentally and, and, and physically a lot more alert, a lot more energetic. Blood streaming now from above the left eye of Matthew Macklin. with the straight left hand. Macklin is fighting back, but he's sluggish with everything that he's doing. It's, it's extra, it's nothing is coming off crisp and, and, and natural. There's an extra effort for everything that he's doing at the stage now. Macklin needs a rally in this round to avoid falling two points down with a round to go, or so it would appear to us. Well, I asked early and before the fight started, is he good enough to expose Martinez? Uh, well, he's been good enough to test him and to make some championship quality come out of him late in the fight. I think that's a great assessment. He's actually made Martinez have to dig down for the first time in a long time. Ashton, left hand again. That looked pretty good. That was pretty doggone good, and that even kept the knockdown five, score. Six, and Macklin seven, is truly eight. stunned. You ready to go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go. Martinez isn't quite as big a disappointment now. No, he doesn't realize that. He doesn't realize that the round, the fight is hey, Matt, still going on. He thinks the we're fight's we're over. But the rules is the referee we're has to it. give account, even if the bell rings, and it. even in the final round. So he didn't realize that he thought the fight was over. The so he fight is being stopped, Jim. It's a good call. They're going to stop it in Macklin's corner, and Sergio Martinez has another 11th round knockout. Oh, 12th round knockout, Larry. Is that right? It may be a 12th. Is it 11th or 12th? 11th. Okay. Second consecutive 11th round knockout as Harold Letterman clears that up for us. Sergio Martinez, I told you, late knockouts are pretty rare. He's good at it, Emmanuel. I thought he fought a tremendous fight tonight. He made adjustment on his opponent and systematically broke him down. Yeah. Phenomenal, uh, and, phenomenal performance. And as I said, you can strike out three or four times early in the fight, but if you had a home run in the night, you've had a great night. And he brought, he needed to do something dramatic, and he did it. He's and entertaining. He gets, you give him the highest marks for that. Harold, do you have a comment? Yeah, Jim, I tell you, you know, you know, I gave him four rounds in a row from eight, nine, ten, and eleven. You know, he just knows when to turn it on. It's close fight up until the eighth, but Sergio Martinez turns it on when he has to turn. The bottom it on. line: after he got knocked down in the seventh, a brilliant rally by Martinez to score yet another dramatic knockout. What a career!
Let's take another look. First knockdown. Yeah, we see the first knockdown. Once again, the straight left. He just buries people with that punch. Another angle. Here we see the shot again. At this stage right now, Macklin will just finish mentally and physically. And Martinez was just as an alert mentally and physically. It was in the first round. Second knockdown. Another crushing straight left hand. And you saw Macklin's left whiz by Martinez's nose as that punch landed. Too slow. Well, for seven rounds, even more, maybe we talked about the disappointment of Martinez's performance, middleweight champion of the world. Another 11th round knockout is going to look pretty good on the record. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Eddie Cotton, after being advised by the challenger's corner he was unable to continue, calls a halt to the fight at the end of round 11. The winner by TKO victory, and still the universally recognized true middleweight champion of the world, Sergio Maravilla.